that already uh, ahead of time. Welcome aboard High School Extra. Sako alongside. We're, this is our second show. First one, we were out live at uh, uh, Mount, Carmel, Mount Carmel. And one of our guests here this evening, a big reason why they are no longer <laughs> number one. He's sitting right next to me, too. <laughs> Let's inter introduce our terrific trio that we have along. Uh, really off the great starts the first couple of weeks of the high school football season. Number 41 there in white, that is linebacker Mike Goolsby from Joliet Catholic. His team knocked off. Number one ranked Mount Carmel is one of the top linebacking prospects, uh, not just in the state, but the entire Midwest. Had Tom Lemming out here just a couple of weeks ago. Spoke very highly of Mike. Uh, in the middle next to them, number four there is the man with the 400-yard rushing effort, Mike Mangan from Hinsdale Central. And next to him, not teammates, just same colored uniforms, red and white. That is Ryan Clifford of Naperville Central. The Red Hawks off to a 2-0 start. He's a big reason why he had a couple of huge rushing performances the first couple of weeks of the season. Well, let me start, though, with Mr. Goolsby, number 41 right there, because a couple of weeks ago, we were sitting live in the gymnasium out at Mount Carmel. Mm -hmm. Certain someone here was touting uh, the caravan as a big uh, number one team here. How, how much did you guys pay attention to that? How important a win was that for your team? It's, it's been real important to me and the entire team because I was on that team when I was a sophomore. We got beat 55, or 45 nothing. So it's, it's a big deal. It's a big, real big rivalry for our I, school. I know Mount Carmel every year, you guys Pick Mount Carmel to play the first game. That's incredible. Oh, yeah. season with the Mount Carmel, but coach likes to do that. <laughs> when was the last time you guys knocked off Mount Carmel before this? I think it was. It's got to be four or five years ago. I'm not. I couldn't tell you for it's sure. It's been a while. Though, yeah, it's been a while, definitely. We're, we're looking at highlights of it here, and the guys in action. And there's the one score that they got. We saw the blocked punt earlier. Did you try to be physical with them right up front? What did you talk about in this game? Well, we had we had a new defensive scheme that we were going to run where I was coming from the outside. We had a lot. We wanted to put a lot of heat on the outside option because that's what they you know pretty much run is option. So that's what we that's what we came out with was just a little, a little, real real aggressive. And two big plays. Usually, uh, Mike, Mount Carmel's known for special teams. Oh, yeah. And doing so well. And yet the two critical plays well, were... Well, so are we, though. I mean, we, yeah, we spent a lot, of, a lot of time on special teams. About they, 40 they, minutes they of practice. They messed up this time. You took advantage of it. Yeah. That's, I, the coach always says special teams is probably the biggest deal in the game. It's really overlooked, but it's real important. And tell us about Mike Maloney. I mean, his contributions on special teams. It was That's real big. It was He was probably the reason that we won the game, almost yeah. definitely. Two block punts. Mm. It, is it now the, the task now to not get too overconfident? Here you knock off the number one team. You guys can maybe get a little bit of cocky. You got to yeah. keep level-headed here. Um, coach, coach always, he always makes sure that we stay level-headed. He, he does a real good job of that. You know, every team, you know, we take like when we began the season, he said that we'd take one game at a time. That's pretty much how we do things. You know, we have really, really haven't talked about Mount Carmel since it happened. You know, it's always next team on the list. Well, if anybody out here, I think maybe this week has a right to be a little bit cocky, it would be the guy over there, number four, Mike <laughs> Mangan from Hinsdale Central. Uh, what, what got into you? Have you ever had a game, anything like that, that even approached those kind of numbers? Nothing that close. <laughs> <laughs> Did you realize the kind of night you were having? I mean, what, what was going right? Just the offensive line with the opening holes? I mean, we, we were at that game. We shot a bunch of these highlights. I mean, they were, and they weren't little runs. I mean, you were ripping off 60, 70, 80-yard runs. You just kept breaking through people. That's nice. Uh, the offensive line and my fullback were just, you know, getting to the middle linebackers, you know, on ISOs and just opening up holes for me to get to. Just saw some grass and headed for it. And <laughs> I think these highlights, Mike, we're going to see, shows a nice combination of strength and speed. Jumps right over it's the It's not defender. just you running around people, but you're going through people also. Yeah, uh, I, I like to, you know, if I can't use my quickness, if I have to get into contact, you know, I like to, you know, go pad to pad and run in with a defense, so. Now, what's this story that Sacco's telling that uh, what, he wasn't play? You weren't player of the week on your own team this week. <laughs> nope. What, what happened? What's the story behind that? Uh, the kid who got it was deserving. It's my uh, fullback who pretty much was a major part of, you know, our success on offense. Colin Shooty, he was opening up some big holes for me all night. I don't. He didn't even get one carry uh, that game, but you know, his job that he did was just huge. I understand that's the first time. Coach Schreiner told me the first time in 28 years that a fullback hasn't had at least one carry in a game because Hinsdale Central's rushing attack is predicated on some fullback runs up the middle also. So yeah. I guess in light of his unselfishness and his blocking, he was player of the week. Was he surprised? He had to be the most surprised guy when Coach made the announcement that he was player of the week. Um, yeah, I think he was surprised, but he definitely deserved it. Have you been looked at? Any schools looking at you? I mean, if they hadn't been, I imagine this is going to open up some eyes right now. And I hope some people, if, the, if there are any of the coaches out there watching, the Tom yes. Lemmings of the world, saw those kind of yes. highlights that we just showed you. Um, I've heard from some of the Big Ten schools, um, some of the MAC schools, and uh, Duke, 
nothing, nothing serious, but I'll worry about that after the season, you know. A performance like that, I think, is going to get more people <laughs> calling your number. I'm sure. Um, and, and we were going to show some highlights, too, of Ryan from Naperville Central here, and they're going to look an awful lot of, I, I think, a little familiar to people watching Mike's highlights because you were bouncing off runners, too. Uh, great blocking up front. you got a huge offensive line that opens up holes for you, don't you? Yeah, our line averages probably around 240 to 50 pounds. They're just massive. They blow the guys off the ball, and it's, it's great. All I do is just find the holes. There's a hole somewhere there. Coach just tells us to run from the left or right. I just find it, and... Go do it. Yeah, I know your offensive line, three of the guys, uh, Baskin's one of them, Hildebrand, I think it's Jeff Pearson, mm -hmm. go, they go like 260, 270, 280, yeah. and Coach Bung, you're smart enough, he puts them all together, side by side by side. That's probably the way you like to run a lot, isn't it? You go um, yeah, I, I cut back a lot there. Or, yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, you can't not trust in your other side, too, right. Ty Mako and Doug Rehor. They're, uh, they're littler, but they're strong. They work out really hard, and... So I can't just run to the left side. I like running to the right also. You know, Ryan, in a lot of ways, too, you are the, the most underrated player up here on this panel this week. In fact, <laughs> yours truly did not even list you as a player to watch this year. <laughs> I don't know how I blanked out with that because I saw you play <laughs> last year. But for some reason, I just didn't put you down there. The very first game this year that I watched you play, you ran for five touchdowns, was it? And it was four. Four and then touchdowns and how many yards? The last game I ran for five. 200 and so many yards? 240, somewhere around there. And I expected him to be like, See, Sako, I told you so, but he was very <laughs> classy about it and said, well, you know, now you know about me, basically. Well, that's how it works. I mean, sometimes the, as a junior, you don't get the pub coming, going into the senior year, but I just want to work hard in the offseason, work out. I got a personal trainer, um, Corey Maselli in Aurora. Mm -hmm. He helped me a lot with a lot of explosive uh, techniques like hand cleans and a lot of squats and stuff. He got me in the weight room. It was really good. Um, I got my offensive line in there and... We just work together as a team, and I guess. Look what happens. Yeah. <laughs> He's Ryan Clifford, Mike Mangan, Mike Goolsby. They're off to great starts so far in high school football two weeks in. We're going to take a break. We'll come back. Sacco's alongside more high school extra right after this. is brought to you by El Cortez Restaurant. If you want the best Mexican food, you've got to come to El Cortez. For 23 years, they've served the most authentic Mexican food you can find and the most delicious. You'll want to come back again to El Cortez. If you are one of those little kids with a big imagination, cows aren't purple. Well, maybe space cows are purple. Well, imagine this. Robert Morris College can turn your creativity into a career in fields like graphic design, multimedia, and web design. Hey, you're going to spend about a third of your life at work. Why not spend it having fun? I think I'll do the trees orange. Green. Trees are green. Robert Morris College, where dreams find direction. Michigan, Great Lakes, Great Fall Color. Call 1-888-78-GREAT to plan your Michigan Fall Color Tour. And check the September 7th and 12th issues of the Chicago Tribune for your chance to win the Michigan Great Lakes, Great Fall Color giveaway. Because Chicagoland's weather can change in a matter of moments, turn to CLTV's weather team to stay one step ahead of the storm. With over 30 years of combined meteorological experience, our weather team are weather experts. Night or day, when severe weather strikes Chicagoland, you'll see continuous local radar along with CLTV's award-winning programming. Don't let a summer storm catch you by surprise. For Chicagoland's weather, turn to Chicagoland's television. Get a 40 somewhere. Friday Night Fever. 10 o'clock right here on CLTV. Last week we covered nine different ball games. We were live at two of the different games. So it's Friday night at 10 o'clock, your complete high school football wrap-up show and re repeat it again on Saturday mornings, looking into moving that time to 10.30 on Saturday mornings. So I'm not sure if that's official just yet. You have to check your local listings as far as that is concerned. We are back here. And oh, by the way, if you want to get a score on the air on Friday nights, if you didn't see your team this past Friday, call us at our score line right there, 630-368. 4444 four, four, as soon as your game is over. We'll make sure we get it on our Friday Night Fever scoreboard.
Welcome back. Saka was here as always on High School Extra. Mike Goolsby, linebacker extraordinaire from Joliet Catholic. Next to him, Mike Mangan from Hinsdale Central. Ran for over 400 yards last week. And Ryan Clifford, tailback for Naperville Central, is here. Let's go over Sacco's. Not top 10 this year. We're going to go right through the top 20 is what we're going to do. We're going to recognize all the teams that you have ranked here in your top 20, beginning with, uh, well, one is Wheaton Warrenville South with Ryan's Naperville Central team right behind. Number two, and they're both expected to win this week. And they're going to meet the 17th. It'd, it'd be a huge upset if either one lost, so I'm expecting them to both win. That means one against two next a week from Friday at Wheaton South. And that'll be a huge game. It's rare to have one against two in the regular season. Uh, Lincoln Way's number three, Naperville North right there at number four in the same conference with uh, Central and Wheaton Warrenville South. Barrington number five with Dan Pullman. Joliet Catholic, Mike Goolsby team number six. They've jumped right up in the rankings after knocking off number one Mount Carmel and deservedly so. Providence, as you can see, seven. Mount Carmel's dropped to eight. Donald's Grove North, nine. And Larkin, maybe one of the highest powered offenses in the area too yeah. with Trevon Hayes having a great season number 10. There you see McHenry, the best team out in the Fox Valley. Uh, they're always a little bit underrated. I'm going to wait till they beat some really good teams before I move them up into the top 10 I think. Donald's Grove South, they're going to play North in, uh, later on the season. That should be a great crosstown rivalry and a great game. St. Charles lost by three points in Naperville North last week. I was at that game on a field goal with three seconds to go so they dropped from 12 to 13. Not much of a drop. Maine South, I think maybe the best team in the CSL South this year. Thornton has a, a, lot, a lot of good game breakers again this year. They're always a, a fast, explosive team. Bolingbrook, Steve Williams, the middle linebacker, goes 6'3", 275, great prospect. Hinsdale Central, Mike Mangan's cracking team. Cracking the top 20. They're here cracking the top 20 for the first time since I've been doing rankings uh, in eight years. So I Mike gets another 400, 20. maybe you move him up a couple of more <laughs> spots, huh? Well, it's the team's got to win, not just the running back. It's got to be the team. Richards barely beat Lake Forest last week in a real close one. They're 18. Libertyville, 19. Best team, I think, in the North Suburban Conference this year. And 20. Marion Catholic, a surprise. I didn't rank them in the beginning of the season. They've really come on strong with a 2-0 and start. Uh, before we get to your Saco selections, too, I know that uh, you mentioned Barrington at number five, a piece of news as far as uh, uh, Barrington is concerned. I think you're probably right. breaking this story tomorrow in the Tribune. There's a story tomorrow in the Tribune that uh, Tim Meyer, the... Uh, great wide receiver and, and defensive back who got into some trouble last week with the police. Uh, Barrington has a no tolerance, zero tolerance policy. Tim has been dismissed from the football team for the rest of the season. Um, he will be able to t participate in basketball and track uh, in those seasons, but for the rest of the football season, his career is over. Yeah, that's a major blow for the Barrington team. That's a, we can do a whole other show on that topic alone. Mm -hmm. There's some, I think, some certainly issues there that need to be discussed as well for the whole way that that, uh, that thing is handled, too. I kind of got some, some questions and there you know, myself. You're not, you're not you know good that. at holding back your, yeah, exactly your feelings. Right. Uh, all right, Saco selections. Let's go. We didn't do have the show last week, but the first week that you came out of the box, four and two. Thanks to this thanks guy. To, thanks to the guy to your right there. <laughs> Mike gave you a big upset pick there. Uh, you weren't able to get that one right. So let's take a look, beginning with uh, Mike Mangan's Hinsdale Central team. They're at York this week, and uh, I would think should be able to continue their role. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be at that game also, and I'm going to lean toward Hinsdale Central. I know York has got some surprises planned for, for Central defensively. Coach Gary Grauwinkle has got a couple ideas of how he thinks he can contain Mangan. We'll see, but i got to go with Central there. Yeah, the Tribune logo means Sacco's going to be at those games. The CLTV logo, which is what you're going to see on the next game, DG South at Addison Trail, that's going to be one of our live games that we're going to cover on Friday Night Fever this Friday night, and that's Dom Brown, who's off to a great start running the football for I, DG South. I think we're going to call him the Dominator from now on the rest of the season. He's 6'2", uh, <laughs> 240, runs about a 4'5", 4'5", 5'40". He's fast, he's big. He's been unstoppable the first two weeks, and I think it's, he's going to continue just rumbling on there. We're also going to be live on Friday night uh, reports from Lincoln Way. Uh, early Sick of Blue showdown, Sandberg and Lincoln Way, both 2-0 uh, and o starts. And Corey Paws is up to a great start, and he's got to continue playing well because his older brother is Casey, starting to play. Casey, you mean. Casey Paws, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. I'm thinking that already. <laughs> Casey's off to a great start, but his older brother Corey is starting to play for UCLA. Had a good first half uh, last week, so Casey's got to keep on the ball to keep up with his older brother. Uh, Providence at St. Rita, you're going to be at that game as well. St. Rita is 2-0. Providence is 2-0. Um, I expected Providence to be 2-0. Well, they did knock off Bishop Mack their first week, but St. Rita is coming on strong. I think you picked Bishop Mack, my I friend. I did pick Bishop Mack, uh -huh. but Providence is, uh, is, is proving me again that they're, they're a good ball club. And St. Rita, um, after having a number of down years in recent years, is now 2-0. They've got 17 returning starters. They could be a team to watch this year. Uh, also, Jacobs is at McHenry. That's a couple of 2-0 teams right there. We're also going to try to get our cameras up. Uh, to McHenry for some highlights of that game on Friday night. If you get to McHenry, and I like McHenry to win this game, try to get a close-up of a running back named Steve Santiago with his helmet off. I understand he's got green hair. He's got all <laughs> kinds of uh, unusual markings on his face, tattoos, everything, but he's quite an individual. I don't think he's... 
from what I hear, he's not just a wild, crazy guy. He's just somebody who likes to, to dress that way and act a certain way, so you might get a close-up of him, but I like McHenry up there. And Crete Moni at TF South, also a couple teams, 2-0 and o starts. Big game in the Sika Orange. These two teams in Richards, along with Eisenhower, are the four best teams in that conference, and this is one of the pivotal games for uh, control early in that league, and I like Crete Moni to win that one. All right, we've got to hit another break. We will do that. We'll come back more with our guest. Sako is here alongside. We'll get to your phone calls as well. We've also got a little feature we're going to debut. Uh, where are they now? Now we're going to get caught up on some of the guys that we've uh, maybe had up here on our stage over the last few years and find out how they're doing in the college ranks after the first weekend of college football. So come on back, more high school extra right after this. Interact live with Chicago's top sports stars on CLTV Sports Page. Sports Page Bulls Extra puts you in touch with personalities like Tim Floyd and Dickie Simpkins. Sports Page Vine Line lets you talk Cubs baseball with pros like Ernie Banks and Jim Riggleman. Sports Page has breaking sports news, too. Chicago's own Corey Maggette turned to Sports Page first to announce he's turning pro. And Bears fans, Sports Page has a call-in show just for you this fall. Chicago's sports stars talk live with you only on Sports Page. Every night at 9, only on CLTV. Generations have relied on us for their energy needs. Given a choice, seems everyone would. Energy from Nikon. Make yourself comfortable. <laughs> Rope walking, jaw dropping, jumbotron hogs. Yeah! Madden NFL 2000. EA Sports. It's in the game. But from time to time, one of the things we want to do is take a look at some of the guys that uh, were high school football stars here in the area and were on our show and see how they're doing in the college ranks. And uh, there's a lot of them out there, believe me. So we picked just a handful of guys here the first week. And uh, tell me, if somebody has a great week that we don't know about, give me a call. I'll be glad to put them on here on the show. But uh, Tim Lester, remember him at Wheaton Warrenville South? All he did was throw for over 400 yards against the Florida Gators for Western Michigan uh, in the loss over the week. Jared Payton, our buddy, Walter's son from uh, St. Viator, is down at Miami, and because of an injury to one of Miami's running backs, Walter's uh, kid Jared is now the second string tailback, and he had nine carries for 32 yards over the weekend for the Hurricanes. Tommy Kutsos, my man from He's Army and Academy. In. His right. brother called me this week, but I was already aware of what the kind of start that he got off to. But he's down there at SIU, and with our Carlton Carpenter having some problems, Tommy gets the start at 194 yards rushing and a couple of touchdowns uh, in his collegiate debut. Uh, you mentioned already Corey Powers. He's out at UCLA splitting time at quarterback, and he's going to play this week against Ohio State, I believe, on national television. People around here get a chance to see Corey. He was 12 out of 18, a buck 28 with a touchdown. Antoine randall -El, already off to a great start at Indiana, ran for over 100 yards, threw for 154, uh, ran for a touchdown, had a couple of touchdown passes. And uh, your Tribune Athlete of the Year last John year, Schweiger. Jonathan Schweigert, uh, not going to be redshirted up at Northwestern. They're playing him. You can get on some of the return teams, and he had one catch for 20 yards in his college debut uh, with the Northwestern Wildcats. We've got Ryan Clifford from Naperville Central, the man on the end, Mike Mangan from Hinsdale Central, Mike Goolsby from Joliet Catholic. Let's go out to the phone lines. First up, 
A Neil teammate, Sauerberg. A teammate of Mike's here. We got Neil on the line here. How you doing, Neil? Good. How you guys doing? Pretty good. Now, Neil is the son of Steve Sauerberg, who is my physician, a longtime college buddy, went to McMurray College together, and Neil's doing a great job. In fact, Neil... What, do you get free medical out of this <laughs> call now? What? Neil, you got an angle. Your dad was fast. He was a soccer player in college, but I think you're faster, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I thought Way so. Way faster. I thought so. He's uh, too old now. <laughs> What's your question you got for Mike or any of the guys up here? Oh, I just want to say quickly that Mike, is he's just a great asset to our team. Not only, you know, like on the field, you know, carrying the ball and stuff. He's great in the locker room, just, you know, keeping everybody's spirits up and always making them feel motivated and stuff. He's a great leader. You hey, know, he, he does a lot more for our team than people just see in the sports page and everything. Hey, hey, Neil, what was the reaction of you guys, Mike's teammates, when you found out that he'd run for over 400 yards? I'm sure, I'm sure you knew he was putting up big numbers. Did you have any idea it was something like 400 or approaching that? Oh, I was on the kickoff, and I was standing out there, and uh, we were getting ready to go. And all of a sudden, the announcer came over the PA thing, and he said, uh, Mike Megan has uh, broke the school record rushing for over 400 yards, 403, I think it was. And I just turned to a friend of mine who was standing right next to me, and we just both could not believe it. It's <laughs> unbelievable. Now, Neil, you're a cornerback. When you're in practice, has there ever been a time when you've got to come up to force the run or stop the run, and Mr. Mangan's coming right at you? Oh, oh let me tell you, I've hit, I've hit him a few times in practice. That's not fun. <laughs> not only he can put moves on you, but when, you just, when you're trying to tackle him, he can run you over. It hurts. It's not fun. <laughs> Hope they'll take it easy on you the next couple of days because you got uh, you got York coming up. So Neil, appreciate hearing from you. Good luck on yeah. On can, Friday. can I get a quick question, real quick? Yeah, sure. All right. Um, I was wondering, Bob, why uh, Downers North was ranked higher than us. I got to ask it. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, it's because um, going into the season, Downers North had guys coming back from last year's team that had fin made it to the semifinals, especially quarterback Joe Reiner. So and Orlando Diaz are running back. So I kind of gave them the edge right now. I had no idea how good you guys were going to be off of last season. You had kind of a 500-type season last year. I know you had some players coming back, but I wasn't sure how good you were going to be. So now you're up in the rankings in the top 20. It's up to you guys to keep on moving up. All right, thanks a lot. Okay. Keep it up, Neil. Appreciate the phone call. Um, Ryan, let me ask you something, too. I, I would imagine that uh, you're probably, uh, even though you're off to a great start, just got to be happy you're even playing football at this point because there was some question there going into the beginning of the season. It was... Uh, Right down to the 11th hour almost, it was almost a teacher strike in Naperville, and you guys weren't sure whether you're going to even have a season opener, right? Yeah, well, some of my buddies over there, my office the line, we went out to Pizza Hut and got some pizza and stayed there that whole night. It was Wednesday night, and we had a game Friday night, supposedly, against Lockport. So we stayed up there the whole night, stayed there from 8 o'clock to 6 o'clock in the morning, waiting to see if we'd actually play football. That was our whole goal, was just to play football. And the tough thing about that in the conference you play and think about this Rob, yeah. you got to forfeit your first game. That's a mm -hmm. non-conference game. There's one loss against you. You can only afford two more losses to get in the playoffs and you've got Wheaton Warrenville South, Naperville North and maybe Wheaton North coming up yeah. plus Stevenson the second week. You could have been, your playoff season could have been in jeopardy going into the DVC season right away. And then Stevenson. Right. So you got another powerhouse but um, <laughs> the DVC is really tough so if any loss especially that you can't control from a strike which is, it's be devastating. I, I heard a rumor that the athletic directors from both schools, Marty B from uh, North and from Central. Uh, Central and um, Neil McCauley from North, mm -hmm. they were threatening to put on the coaches' whistles and clipboards and coach the football teams in that first game. And when all the negotiators heard about this, they quickly settled the strikes and we can't have that happen. Well, I didn't hear about that. But <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> Fortunately, it got settled and they're off to a 2 0 right. start here. Yeah. Let's uh, pick up the calls with uh, Ramil is in Chicago. Hi, Ramil. Um, yeah, I, I just want to ask Mike Mangan a few questions. Okay. Um, what college is you looking at, and possibly if you're looking at um, Central Michigan with my boy Dominic and Vince Weber? Oh, <laughs> that's right. Vince Weber's there. Yeah. Um, I haven't really narrowed down any schools that I'm looking at. I'm just hearing right. from schools, and uh, I'm going to see what happens at the end of the season. He, he's wide open. He'll listen to all comers, Ramil. That's right. Um, and I also want to know... Um, do you think you'll ever be as good as um, Chuck, the head slap Chuck Carpenter, um, legendary uh, three-sport athlete at Willowbrook and um, father to Terry, the lineman last year? <laughs> um, I, I don't know who that guy is. but you uh, don't play Willowbrook, I don't think, do you guys? No, we don't play Willowbrook, but uh, the name sounds intimidating. So. <laughs> Thanks, Ramil, for the phone call. Appreciate it. Uh, before we hit a break, what we'll do is when we come back, I want to touch on the schools, maybe who else is looking at uh, Ryan, and we know that uh, Mike is getting offers from from all over, see maybe where he is uh, leaning towards as well. So we'll come back. More high school extra, more of the honor roll as well. So stick around. We're back in just a moment.
Sports Page is brought to you by Robert Morris College. If this sounds like something you might try... That'll be 205, please. I'll give you a buck 50. Well, you just might have a future in business. And Robert Morris College can prepare you for that future in fields like management, accounting, paralegal, and more. Hey, you're going to spend about a third of your life at work. Why not spend it doing something you love? How about $2 even? It's a deal. Robert Morris College, where dreams find direction. Tough negotiator. We got to stop 36. This is our season here, boys. Come on, guys. Now we're going to eat you up, big man. I'm going to eat you up. Meet Cyberbus. And his ball hawking, tightrope walking, jaw dropping, jumbotron hawks. Yeah! Madden NFL 2000. EA Sports. It's in the game. Saturday on Good Eating. Michigan is known for its blueberries and cherries, but don't rule out apples this fall. We'll visit a local farm in Berrien Springs, Michigan, where the owners are going to show us how they grow their local varieties. The local farmer shows me how to make a homemade apple pie, plus a variety of cheap eats in Lincoln Park at Flounders. See the Chicago Tribune's food section come alive every weekend. Watch Good Eating Saturday only on CLTV. Guy Santiago there on the honor roll. A lot yes. of great performances you see from the last week in high school football. And these uh, three gentlemen have had uh, some great performances the first two weeks. Down there in the end, Ryan Clifford from Naperville Central, Mike Mangan, number four from Hinsdale Central, and Mike Goolsby, linebacker from Joliet Catholic. Uh, we're talking about schools. You really got your, your pick of the litter. You're one of the top prospects in the nation. Uh, Notre Dame is what I keep reading about and hearing about. Is that where you're leaning? That's or? definitely where I'm leaning to, yeah. Have you been down there and visited? I went, I've, I've taken three unofficial visits down there. Three, so you must really like what yeah. you're seeing down there, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What is it you like about Notre Dame, Mike? Um, everybody always asks me that. It's like everything about that school, like, clicks, you know? Like, whether it be, um, like, they're having a new academic athletic, uh, like, you know, aid center, center okay. that's going up. Like, it'll be finished when I'm a freshman. And, like, another big deal for me is, uh, like, early playing time. And right now, with these senior linebackers that are going to be graduating, they're not going to have that many you know, real, real good linebackers that are going there. So, I mean, it looks pretty bright for me. And you also have the Rudy, the Rudy connection with Notre Dame, don't oh, you? Oh, yeah, yeah. One of your teammates on his team, what's his name? Ryan Rudiger. Ryan Rudiger is related to? That's his uncle. Uh, um, you know, the Rudy, movie Rudy. The Rudy from the movie Rudy. <laughs> Rudy Rudiger is his uncle. Yeah, so. and then I, like, my, our strength coach at our school, uh, Francis Rudiger, is his brother, the guy from the movie's brother. Really? So. So you it's got a school of celebrities. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we look at the highlights of you there, and you almost looks like you almost looks like a guy that's in college right now playing against uh, some high school kids. And I mean, these are two pretty big kids you're sitting next to, and, and you're, you're much bigger than the Ryan and Mike right there with you. I mean, do you get an idea when you talk to the Notre Dame guys that um, a chance maybe to play immediately as a freshman? Do they even talk about in, in those like, terms with you? My, my birthday's in two days. I'm going to be 17 and, and on, on the 10th. So, um, like, I always figured that I'd redshirt because, you know, I'm going to be 17 when I go into college, and there's, you know, 23 year olds or whatever in college <laughs> and I had talked to you know coach Davey about that and he said that they don't they don't automatically redshirt anybody if they they'll throw you out there you know and if you're getting your butt kicked around they'll redshirt you but it's, you know when you come in you're you're going to be on the team whether you red you know it's up to you whether you redshirt or not if you were to play next year at this time of the year you could be a 17 year old true freshman going out in the field yeah exactly because you wouldn't be 18 yet no Jeez. Wow. <laughs> Pretty young. Uh, Ryan, are you, are you looking at uh, any schools in particular? I imagine the first couple of weeks with numbers that you're putting up, kind of like Mike, mm -hmm. people I think are going to start noticing you. No, no Notre Dame yet. But, <laughs> um, I got a lot of MAC schools and Big Ten. Uh, Wisconsin has been calling me and a lot of MAC schools. So 
my options are pretty much open right now. And I think you're going to get more schools as the season goes along because um, Naperville Central is such a high-powered program. Right. They draw recruiters there all the time. Maybe they'll go there to see one of your big linemen, and they'll see this little guy running through the lines <laughs> and breaking through. I mean, really impressing scouts. And then at that point, you may get a lot more offers. Yeah, we got a big recruit, Dave Hildebrand. So a lot of scouts will go there to see him, and then maybe they'll see a little running back running around. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. Well, one, one of the things Sacco mentioned already, and you kind of touched on, you got Wheaton Warrensville South coming up. It's in two mm -hmm. weeks. Is it tough to not look yeah. ahead? Uh, to that game and knowing how important it is and what that program is all about, defending state champ and the way the game went last year, and to concentrate on this week's team, was it Glen Bard? Uh, West, West Chicago. West, West Chicago you're playing this week and keep focused on that? Well, once you look past the team, that's when you can get, you know, upset or so a team could just run all over you somehow. But, um, yeah, we just can't look past West Chicago. you got to take each game one at a time and go get go at West Chicago, and then you got a big week against Wheaton Normal South. So. What was the final last year against Wheaton Warrenville South? It was really high, like 54, 56 to 42, 56 to 42 yeah. Okay, well, it was just a huge they scored challenge. the most points, I believe, off Both times in the playoffs Wheaton also. We they scored 26 them, points yeah. against them in the playoffs. Yeah, too. we hung with them pretty well. Let's go back out to the phone lines. Mike in Bolingbrook has been hanging on the line waiting. Hi, Mike. How you guys doing tonight? Good, is, thanks for is waiting. Is this the Mike from Bolingbrook? Yes, Bob, this he is calls the us Mike. Every, every year. <laughs> a How proud, proud supporter of Naperville Central Red Ox football. <laughs> Ryan, I got a question for you, big guy, and you, you're spectacular. And I'm just like to say hello to all those offensive linemen back there. But uh, what, what has been the difference in the offensive line this year as compared to last year? Because the guys last year were, let's face it, they were pretty big too. If, if, is this just a group that has just dedicated themselves to working hard and and uh, opening them holes for you? I guess. I guess they worked out pretty uh, hard in the off season. It's. I don't want to rip on the guys from last year. I mean, they were really good. They were really good too, and they worked really hard. But for some reason, the holes feel like they're a lot bigger. I don't know if it's because I'm faster, because I'm a senior now, or I don't know if I've gotten better. But the holes are a lot bigger, and they're working their butt off. So it's pretty good. Hey, Mike, I appreciate the phone call, and you know, uh, thanks for calling. One of the things I think okay, when, we look at, when we look at the highlights here, Ryan, are you guys in action? One thing you see is. Uh, the offensive linemen are downfield with you oh, yeah. on a lot of these plays. It's not like they're just making their blocks at the line of scrimmage and that's it. Right. They're going 5, 10, 20 yards down the field with you here. We're coached pretty well. Our coaches just work on um, the whole practice, on going down and blocking the safeties and working the second level. First, got to get the first level, but they work on getting the second level too and then maybe even the safeties. And they're all real athletic, so they can handle the safeties. They can block them and the linebackers. And they're all real athletic, which is really good for me. Yeah. Mike, thanks for the phone call. I know that uh, Ryan appreciates it as well. We've got to hit another break. As we do that, let's show you the SACO hotline phone number. Anybody that's got some uh, hot recruiting information or tips, you got some of those, you know, where are they now, people like that you want to make us aware of or for the honor roll, uh, give SACO a number at the hotline here. Definitely. There's also a lot of basketball news cropping up now and then, too. We've got uh, a couple of players from Yugoslavia transferring into Chicago area schools, some pretty good basketball players. So basketball, football, all kinds of sports right now. Give me a call. If you got an idea for a feature, give me a call also. Sports page is brought to you by Dean Milk Chugs. If you want the best Mexican food, you've got to come to El Cortez. For 23 years, they've served the most authentic Mexican food you can find and the most delicious. You'll want to come back again to El Cortez. Hi, I ordered the barbecue chicken sandwich. Oh, I'm sorry. There you go. Here, have some barbecue fries and a barbecue shake on the house. Barbecue. For real barbecue, 
Try Lloyd's Barbecue Chicken Sandwich, only at Subway. Real hickory smoked chicken, slow cooked and authentic Lloyd's Barbecue Sauce. And topped with your choice of fresh ingredients. Subway, the way a sandwich should be. More barbecue. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me. Car thieves are always in the market for no interest auto loans. Amazing performances from the week two around the, the Chicagoland area in high school football. Ryan Clifford, Mike Mangan, uh, Mike Goolsby are our guests here this evening from respectively Naperville Central, Hinsdale Central, Joliet Catholic. Back out to the lines, Dustin in Joliet. Hi, Dustin. How you doing? We're good. I just had a question for Mr. Sakamoto. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, um, all right, you know how we beat Mount Carmel? Yeah. Oh, uh, why uh, doesn't Mr. Sakamoto usually rate us higher than we usually are? Yeah, why doesn't he do that? Exactly. A great question. Yeah, Goolsby yeah, yeah. Goul right yeah, yeah. wants to know the answer to that, too. He's sitting right next to him. Well, you got to remember, in the beginning of the season... Where'd you I, have him ranked in the beginning? I didn't Not even, even rank Joel Cat in the top 20. Uh, that was probably me underrating Joel Catholic big time. Um, <laughs> after you big, did beat Mount Carmel, I moved you up to number 6, which is a huge jump from nowhere to number 6. I think I have you ranked higher than anybody else in the Chicago area right now. If you continue winning and some of these teams above you lose... Um, it's going to be tough to get by them, but you've got Wheaton and you've got two Naperville's, Barrington, Lincoln Way, ahead of you. If some of those teams lose and you guys continue winning, uh, you'll probably move up some more. Plus, you've got to figure, I mean, Wheaton or Naperville Central, one of those is going to lose in two weeks. Somebody and could those, lose, there's right. three of those teams are in the same conference, so they'll probably knock each other off once or twice. I mean, That's Lincoln true. Way's got a tough schedule. Barrington, too, as it goes on. Uh, are you even looking at rankings at this point right no, like I that? Saying, um, I was going to say to Dustin that... Uh, <laughs> That uh, ratings, they aren't the most important thing. You know, it's the W's that count, you know, because nobody's, you know, if you, if you go out and play a team and you're ranked higher than they are, they're really not going to care. You know, they're going to come out even harder than, you know. And, and, if you, and if you lose when you're highly ranked, it, you know, it makes you look bad. The only ranking that counts is the end of the season. Yeah, I mean, we, you know? I, like, I try not to read the papers and stuff, but, you know, people talk about it. But that's not, that's not the most important thing. Well, was that the biggest win that you've had since you've been there, though, knocking since, off Mount Carmel? Since, personally, since I've been yeah. there? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely, because we lost uh, a couple close games last year, and so it's, it feels good to get that big one. Yeah. Hey, Mike, you're kind of in the same position, too. You're a team that was uh, unranked, and now you've kind of had a big mm -hmm. first couple of weeks and have kind of creeped into that top 20 there. Do you guys look at the rankings and look at the numbers as you move up the board a little bit here or just take it one at a time? We're just taking it one week at a time. I mean, what happens happens in the papers, you know. We don't concern ourselves much on that. I mean, if we'll look at them, but... You know, it's, it's always good motivation when uh, you get picked to, to lose, you know. It's always something to pin up in the <laughs> like locker like room. I picked and lose before from plenty of times. <laughs> Mike, talk a little bit about your offensive line and your fullback, too, because Ryan's, you know, dominated the conversation. I've been talking about his line, which is a great line, but let's give these guys some, some time here. Um, I might not have the same size. That, uh, I mean, my line might not be have the same size as Naperville Central, but... You know, they're, they're quick. You know, they get off the ball. They get a good push. I mean, all of them are hardworking. What are their names? Give us some names. They uh, love to have names out there. Uh, right tackles, Ryan Barrett. Uh, right guards, Connor Looney. Uh, center is Matt Doobie. Uh, left guards, Mark Pugh. And uh, left tackles, John Remkes. And then uh, back with me is uh, Colin Schutte. Player of the week at Hinsdale. Player of the week. Have you guys played together for a while? I mean, is it a mostly a senior-laden team? Um, um... It's, it's pretty much mixed up. I mean, it. These two classes mesh really well together. Um, you know, the the, junior, the class below us uh, went nine and zero, oh and, and I think eight zero oh and one as freshmen and sophomores, mm -hmm. and we went eight and one as sophomores. So I mean, I think we were all kind of looking forward to this year. You know, when we'd be together, and you know, everything's working out well. We get along, and things are going good. And Mike mentioned some of the guys in your defense who are playing well: linemen, linebackers, DBs. Yeah, like uh, like this year that I'm playing. Last year, I played, in the two prior years, I had played in, inside, inside linebacker, right. and now I'm playing the uh, outside linebacker position. And we have, 
Like we were talking about on the way up here, we have some real big linebackers like Joe Korn, who's he's probably six four two, I think seventeen is what the program said. And like uh, we got our other inside, or both of our inside linebackers are one of them six three, Lee Sasinski. He's six three, like one ninety five. The other one's Jake Ankarzik. He's six foot, like two hundred two ten. And um, they're like you know we got Mike Maloney. At, How big is Mike? He's <laughs> six five, two sixty, I believe. Tiny. <laughs> <laughs> you, you like the outside as opposed to the inside? Um, it's different. It's a, it's a, it just depends. Like if they got me coming, you know, it's more fun than you know sitting back in coverage all the time. But get some more sacks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Rush the quarterback. Tell you what, we're gonna hit a break. They've mentioned some of their teammates. Well, some of the teammates that they've brought along bring with them, them here. We'll bring them up here. We'll let these guys introduce each of the guys they've brought along with them, and then we'll wrap things up right after this. So stick around. internet. It's at the heart of business, creating new jobs, demanding new skills. But what's at the heart of the internet? You'll find the answer at DeVry in our electronics degree programs. At DeVry, you'll learn about computers, networking, wireless communications. You'll learn the electronics technology behind the internet, the technology that's changing the way the world works. For a higher degree of success, call 1-800-DeVry-11. Rope-walking, jaw-dropping, Jumbotron Hawks. Yeah! Madden NFL 2000. EA Sports. It's in the game. Today, buying a home is much more than a place to live. It's an investment. Probably the most important one you'll ever make. With any investment, you need professional advice. And Stokes Investment Development Corporation has the real estate and investing knowledge you need. Whether it's your first home, condo, or multifamily, or your first mansion, Stokes has done it before and done it right. Call Stokes Investment Development Corporation today at 888-602-2376. Sports Page is brought to you by Dean Milk Chugs. Watch me now. Check a leg, check a leg. Dean's milk chug. Milk where you want it. Oh, check a leg. All right, we got just a couple of minutes here. These guys brought us T-shirts. We'll get our T-shirts. We gave them our Friday Night Fever right. footballs that they've all got. We'll let, uh, let Mike Goolsby do the honor. Start with your guys here from Joliet Cath. All right, this is our Mark Sopko. He's our two-year quarterback starter. Uh, Joey Van Tassel, tailback, wide receiver. Tom Ravotten, he plays uh, free safety and corner. Mike Maloney, he's a two-way player. He plays offensive tackle and uh, defensive end. And uh, Mike Dackman, he's a three-year starter. Okay, Mike Mangan with the Hinsdale Central guys. All right, uh, up first is my center. That's Matt Doobie. Uh, right there in back is uh, my uh, tackle, Ryan Barrett. This guy right here is my uh, fullback, it's Colin Schutte. <laughs> back there is uh, my other tackle, uh, John Remkes. And right here is my other uh, guard, or one of my guards, uh, Mark Pugh. And on the end right there, not forgotten, though, is uh, Connor Looney. Okay, and Ryan, do the honors with the guys in the front row here from Naperville Central, your lineman all the way across. All right, this is Doug Rehor, right tackle, Ty Macko, right guard, Jeffrey Pearson, center, Dave Hildebrand, left guard, and Donnie Baskin, left tackle. 
Guys, great job so far in the early part of the season here. They're all off to 2-0 starts. They're all yeah. playing great. We got our T-shirts here. You got... Uh, look at these. Look at these ones. Julia Kath already here. Naperville Central. Naperville Central one. We got the Hinsdale, got Hinsdale Central right one uh, as well. So we're off to a good start as well, getting our loot <laughs> as well with our shirts. They've got their Friday Night Fever footballs. Friday all Night right. Fever coming your way. Uh, 10 o'clock replay on Saturday morning. We'll be at a lot of different high school football games around the Chicagoland area. Soccer will be out there as well, covering them as, uh, as always. Uh, no show next week because we've got Cubs okay. baseball, but we'll be back uh, two, two weeks from tonight. So, uh, guys, say good night to everybody and appreciate everybody that called and watched tonight. We'll see you back here in two weeks, High School Extra. This is a CLTV News update. Hello, I'm Greg Prather in the news. The Chicago Police Board sets January 8th as a hearing date for the four officers involved in the LaTanya Haggerty shooting. Haggerty, who was unarmed, was killed by police on June 4th following a car chase. Police Superintendent Terry Hillard is recommending all four officers be fired. Tomorrow's the day Illinoisans find out what the new state license plates will look like. Secretary of State Jesse White ran a contest where motorists voted on the Internet for their favorite design. The new plates will start being issued in 2001. CLTV will carry the unveiling live at 10 a.m. And investors can now speculate on the weather at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Utilities, insurance companies, and other businesses with a lot riding on the weather can use the futures to hedge their risk. Initially, investors can take a chance on conditions in Chicago, Atlanta, Cincinnati, and New York. That's a brief look at the news. I'm Greg Prather. Calling show for sports fans with opinions. It's the only show in Chicagoland offering you live one on one with the pros that know. This is Sports Page. And Wednesday night means high school extra here on Sports Page. Hello, everyone. I'm Rob Goldman. As always, Saka will be alongside. Full show planned for you tonight. Joining us here in our studios will be Frank Lenti, head coach of Mount Carmel, and former Bear Emery Moorhead to discuss their upcoming inductions in the Chicagoland Sports Hall of Fame. And before the show is through, we'll also meet the Red Hawks from Naperville Central, the new number one ranked team in high school football. Plus, our coach and athlete of the week, our Dean's List honor roll, the Powerade Power 20. And where are they now? A look at some former high school stars now starring on the collegiate level. It's all coming your way after we check the news of the day. And even when Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire do nothing these days, it's news. The two sluggers meeting for the final time at Wrigley this year, this afternoon. Sammy with a two-homer lead on Big Mac, 61-59. to The only homer of the series between the two came on Monday night when McGuire broke up that John Lieber bid for a perfect game. Both sluggers with offers on Wednesday, disappointing the crowd of over 38,000, which also set a new attendance record for the Cubs in the process. McGuire 0 for 3 with a couple of walks and a K. Sammy 0 for 2 with two walks. And Mark Grace with a two-run triple here in the bottom of the fifth proved to be the difference in the game. That triple pulls him dead even with Rafael Palmero for the honor of most hits in the decade of the 90s. The closest either Sammy or Big Mac came to a homer was this drive by Sammy in the seventh to the wall in right center caught by J.D. Drew with Mickey Morandini being thrown out at home trying to tag from second. The Cubs win 5-3. to three. Traxel gets his seventh win pretty much assuring him he won't lose 20. With our post-game report from Wrigley, Here's John Kerr. Watching the Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire, baseball's premier sluggers on the same field at the same time. It was a much height one-on-one -on -one matchup that really never materialized this week at Wrigley Field. The combined totals of the two for the three-game set, two for 29 with one home run. Well, I think uh, it's a testament that they were both pitched pretty tough, but um, you know sometimes when you when you put that much into a guy. Um, this human nature is almost to uh, let up on some other people, you know, and, and uh, Andrews hit a lot of home runs uh, for them. A lot of people hit home runs in the series. We're going up there and, you know, you know that they're not, they're not going to give nothing up to you to him. So pretty much I was uh, worried about that and, you know, they pitched me great. The man who allowed McGuire a 60-second homer last year picked up the win for the Cubs. Steve Traxel struck out seven, allowing three earned runs in six innings. Trax is a free agent after the season, so the start could have been his last at Wrigley Field. If it were up to him, though, he'd like to stay. 
I love Chicago. You know, I can't imagine a better place to win anything. I mean, you know, we got killed in the playoffs, and it was still unbelievably fun. You know, and uh, you know, everyone will tell you if, if, if you're going to win one anywhere, this is the place to do it. Regardless of what happens with Traxel, there will be a lot of changes this offseason on the north side. With just 10 games to go, the Cubs are riding out the season, and then we'll wait for management to decide their fates. Famous blues guitarist Buddy Guy sang the seventh inning stretch Wednesday. All he did was sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. No tunes were strum on Buddy's well traveled guitar. Wasn't necessary. That's because Cub fans have been singing the blues themselves all summer long. Reporting from Wrigley Field, I'm John Kirk, CLTV Sports. And the White Sox in New York taking on the Yankees. Rookie Kip Wells getting the start and getting some early offensive support against Hideki Arabu. Can't start any better than that. First batter Mike Caruso with a leadoff homer is second of the year. And top of the second, Chris Singleton with a solo shot. Singleton also with another solo homer on the fourth. Two on the game. That gives him 16 on the year. In the bottom of the fourth, Wells surrenders a solo shot of his own to Darryl Strawberry. That's Straw's second. Wells in line for the victory. He's out of the game now. They're in the bottom of the seventh, and the Sox lead it 3-2. to two. Blake Brockemeyer is out, and Jim Flanagan, Ty Halleck, and Warwick Holdman are listed as questionable for Sunday's game in Oakland against the Raiders. Also questionable has got to be the antics of Curtis Enos when he scores a touchdown. His latest centerfold polls against Seattle has incurred the wrath of many a talk show caller and columnist, not to mention his own head coach who says he'd rather not see such celebrations. Today, Enos was asked if his pose was a spontaneous act or planned in advance, which is what we might ask about his response to the question as well. None of your business. <laughs> I mean, it's none of your business what I plan to do, especially the score, so uh, it's none of your business. Well, no, I'm not asking you what you plan No, I'm, I'm just saying. saying it's none of your business. If I planned it, I planned it. If I did it spontaneous, I did it spontaneous. But the point is, it's none of your business. What I, what I decide to do when I get in the end zone is my business, not yours. So if it's spontaneous, you can take it either way. I can say I did spontaneous, but you'll say I planned it. So basically, I'm saying it's none of your business. So will you do no, no, whatever Coach that. Teron wants you to do? Whatever he wants me to do. Okay. okay. So. But it's his business. Right. right. I wish he came with subtitles. The Fighting Illini have obviously caught the television honchos off guard. How else to explain that all the conference games will be televised this Saturday, except for the Illini showdown against Michigan State. Not too many people expected this to be a battle of unbeatens, with both teams coming in a perfect 3-0. and And Illinois quarterback Kurt Kittner can stake an early season claim for most improved player in college football. The pride of Schaumburg has gone from an uneasy-looking freshman to a confident sophomore, and with nine touchdown passes and no interceptions thus far, He's the third leading passer in the nation. He's, he's played well and gotten better in each of the three games. Um, you know, I'm happy for Kurt, but, but as I said last week when Danny was, was co-defensive player, nobody wins this award without a great supporting cast. And, and Kurt's not going not gonna to have the kind of game he had, and he knows it, if the line didn't protect, the backs didn't protect, and guys didn't make plays down the field. And, and uh, he, they're doing that, and, and what he's doing, the job of a quarterback, is to give them opportunities to make plays, put them in position to make plays and to run the offense, execute the offense, and, and he's doing an outstanding job of that so far. What a terrible break for the Chicago Fire forward Josh Wolf, the second leading scorer on the team, and our guest this past Monday on Sports Page out for the year after tearing the ACL in his left knee during practice Tuesday. Josh had 10 goals this season. He was recently named to the U.S. National Under-23 team. He figured to be an integral part of the Fire's quest to defend their MLS Cup title. He was hurt while practicing shootouts, of all things, at the end of Tuesday's practice. Some quick notes. It's one down, one more to go for the Blackhawks, who signed defenseman Anders Eriksson today. Boris Mironov still holding out. The Bulls have released forward Keith Booth. He was the team's top draft pick in 1997. Mickey Morandini has been suspended by the NL office for two games for bumping an umpire in last Friday's game against the Brewers and Pirates outfielder Brian Giles out for the rest of the year after breaking his finger in last night's ball game. And this reminder, don't forget, Friday Night Fever, our high school football highlight show moving to a new time this week, 10.30, a half hour later. That way we can bring you even more scores and highlights, and those of you at the ball games can get home in time to see the show. So remember, 10.30 from now on, Friday nights and 10.30 Saturday mornings for the replay of Friday Night Fever. Speaking of high school football, up next, it's High School Extra. Big show tonight. Frank Lenti, head coach of Mount Carmel's here. So is former Bear Emery Moorhead. And we'll meet the new number one team in the rankings, the Naperville Central Redhawks. I think they're all here tonight. As always, Sacco is also here through it all. So stick around. It's High School Extra 
right after these messages. Sports Page is brought to you by Powerade. Keep playing. Pros always call time. Time at the half. Time for commercial. Time for off season. Not out here, man. Out here, you don't want to stop. You gotta be with your game. Trying on new moves. Saying, I came to play without saying a word. This is the only reason you call time. Unless a giant meteor falls from the sky. Which ain't happened yet. Keep playing. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Is it the Chrysler Sebring LXI Coupe or the Chrysler Sebring Limited Convertible? Multi-valve V6. Speed-sensitive steering. Room for you and three friends. And a luxurious leather-trimmed interior. Now, the choice is yours. Get 1500 cash allowance on the Sebring Coupe or get a low lease rate on the convertible. Chrysler. Engineered to be great cars. You don't have to drive far to escape the hustle and bustle of Chicago. Great golf is just minutes away. For Chicagoland's best golf value, come out and play Chicago Park District Golf. For advanced tee times, call 312-245-0909. Because Chicagoland's weather can change in a matter of moments, turn to CLTV's weather team to stay one step ahead of the storm. With over 30 years of combined meteorological experience, our weather team are weather experts. Night or day, when severe weather strikes Chicagoland, you'll see continuous local radar along with CLTV's award-winning programming. Don't let a summer storm catch you by surprise. For Chicagoland's weather, turn to Chicagoland's television. Our coach of the week. Why not? His team is now number one after they knocked off Wheaton Warrenville South. Joe Bungie, and he really deserves the honor. He did a great job. Him and his entire staff did a great job of scheming a game plan against Wheaton Warrenville South. And Joe Bungie, being the modest guy he is, he likes to spread around his credit. He declined to come on our show tonight, Rob, so that one of his assistant coaches could get some uh, some credit. So I like that in the coach. And we'll meet the assistant coach and a bunch of the Red Hawks too in the uh, course of this evening here at, uh, a little bit later on in the show because I think uh, I think the entire team is out here. We're ready for a, <laughs> an inter squad scrimmage. Our athlete of the week, boy, Stafford Owens, following in the great line of uh, Antoine Randall, is making some people take notice the last couple of weeks. He really is. In the last two games, get this, Rob, he's run <laughs> for 591 yards, scored 13 touchdowns. That's in two games. For some guys, that's an entire season. He's off to a great start. I imagine they're going to focus on him now, but he's had uh, quite a season already. So that's our uh, coach and athlete of the week. We still got the uh, uh, Power Aid, Power 20 going to be coming your way. Our Dean's List honor roll, uh, Saco selections, a whole lot coming your way. Plus, we'll meet the Red Hawks. But first off here, I want to talk a little about the uh, Chicagoland Sports Hall of Fame. The inductions are coming up tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. And a couple of the uh, honorees we have here in the studio with us, and we're glad to have them here. Frank Lenti, the head coach of Mount Carmel. Uh, he was on with us at the beginning of the season in our, our preview show. And Former Bear Emery Moorhead, the tight end down there at the end looking dapper. He's going to be inducted uh, as well. So we congratulate both of them right off the top for a great honor like that. And, Coach, we talked a little bit about it at the beginning of the season. But as the day draws nearer to tomorrow night, um, have you thought about what you're going to say or something like that? I mean, it's a great honor that you're receiving. Well, I think, first of all, you have to say a lot of thank yous to people. <laughs> because, again, I'm just fortunate to be the guy out in front, as I told you back in August. I'm very fortunate that we have a great administration, a great faculty that helps support the students, uh, the families of the kids that play. Of course, nobody has that kind of success without good players and a great coaching staff. And like I said, I feel very fortunate to be the guy out in front of all that uh, because nobody has success without someone else giving them the opportunity to do so. And then we've got Emery Moorhead back in Chicago. Now, Emery, 
you and I worked together for a few years. I was covering the Bears <clears throat> back in the late 80s, and you were playing there. And, and I know he was one of the best interviews. Always very articulate. I'm sure you're going to give a great speech. I'm already planning on listening well, to that speech. I didn't even know I had to do that. So I can <laughs> think of something tonight uh, to give out there. But it is a great honor. And uh, anytime you... Uh, you know, are, are lucky enough to receive this. Like Frank said, there's so many people that go into, uh, you know, building up to all of this. You know, your parents, your teammates, and I'm lucky to go in with a couple of other Bears, uh, mm -hmm. Jay Hilgenberg and Jim Covert, two outstanding teammates. So, you know, I'm glad to be one of the few that are going in tomorrow. I was going to say, you're going in there with some other former Bears that it's kind of bulging in the yes. Chicagoland uh, Sports Hall of Fame. That's, that's a great thing. Well, you know, the Bears have a special place in Chicago yeah. sports fans, and so uh, you know, it's, I think it's only ironic, but also uh, 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 the right thing to take in some of these uh, great Bear players. You know, in some ways, you guys were, were so powerful, made such an impact on many of our lives that um, even today, I'm sure people go up to you and you're part of the Super Bowl Shuffle Bears. That's your identity in some ways, I think. Well, you know, it's, it's funny. When we won, won the Super Bowl, so many people came up to me, a lot of women that came up to me and said, you know, I never, ever follow football. My husband would watch football. And, uh, but when you guys put so much fun into the game mm -hmm. that the whole family got involved in uh, watching the Chicago Bears, and it truly was a very special time for the city of Chicago and all of my teammates. Did you ever even think back, I mean, back to the days playing high school football and, and starring even back then, that uh, you, you probably never thought of honors such as this uh, somewhere down the line, being in a, a Chicagoland Hall of Fame? I, I never did. And, uh, you know, you play for the glory of your school, like the kids from Naperville here. That's what's important. And as things go on and time goes on and you're lucky enough to play in college and you're lucky enough to play professional, and, uh, you know, the key thing is that you come back and you put something back in. When you get something out of a program uh, like Frank's or, or the Naperville program, you got to come back and, and put something in. I was very fortunate to be around Chicago growing up here and happen to play for the Bears. So it was easy for me to do things within the community and put things back in. Now, Coach, I thought it was great. I read in the paper where you told your players before the Marian Catholic game, if we lose... I'm going to be moping around the whole weekend. It's my birthday. I'm turning 48 this weekend. I'm just going to be a bear this weekend at my home and my family and everything. So we better not lose. Those uh, kids came through for you. They definitely <laughs> did. It was, it was nice to, that they took the old guy into consideration <laughs> there. Um, I was 48 on the 20th of September, and I told some of my offensive linemen, the kids that I coach, because we hadn't played very well, really, the first three games. I said, yes. fellas, you know, it's time to step up to the plate and show what you're all about. I said, just do the old guy a favor, you know, just give it your best shot. I told my one, just do two things, play hard and have fun. It didn't look like we were having any fun out there. That's true. The kids had put themselves under way too much pressure. I said, all I want you to do is play hard, have fun, and then that way the old guy won't have to mope around all weekend <laughs> waiting for his birthday. <laughs> that way the coach can have a little fun, too, while things are going on. Uh, speaking of coaches, Emery, who are the ones that, they, I mean, obviously everybody think of the coach immediately, but the ones that maybe shaped even before you got to the professional level. I'm thinking you know, high school, through the yeah. college ranks, some well, of those people. Well, that... Frank is probably familiar with uh, Mernie Lazier, who was a legendary coach at Evanston High School. Yeah. And we had so many good teams. And he really taught us the basics and put the discipline in us when we were young. And I saw those things carry over in college, and I was a guy that played a lot of different positions, and I was always able to go back and rely on the basics that I learned in high school that helped me change positions. Because when I moved to tight end in my fifth year as a pro, it was totally different, but you know, I was able to come through and get back to the basics of blocking, and, and it really helped me a lot. Well, we got to hit a break. We'll do that. We're going to come back. we got more. we get a chance to talk to a couple of the inductees, the newest members of the Chicagoland Sports Hall of Fame, former Bear Emery Moorhead and head coach of Mount Carmel, Frank Lenti are here as well as Sacco alongside, as always, on High School Extra. We'll take a break. We'll come back. More High School Extra right after this.
watch me now. Check a leg, check a leg. Dean's milk check. Milk where you want it. Oh, check a leg. See it. Drive it. Buy it. Buy it at Arlington Heights Ford. Choose from 700 new Fords and certified used cars from Illinois' largest volume dealership. Explorer, Expedition, Windstar. Get 0.9 financing and a $500 rebate on new SUVs and minivans. Take Route 53 North past Woodfield Mall to Dundee Road. Turn right on Dundee Road to Arlington Heights Ford. Number one in volume, selection, and customer satisfaction for 10 straight years. As legend has it, the Chicago fire started when a cow kicked over a lantern. Flames engulfed the city, burning red as far as the eye could see. Nothing could stop the Chicago fire. Not the LA Galaxy. Not DC United. Not Columbus Crew. Not the Colorado Rapids. Don't miss the final game of the regular season. See the Chicago Fire battle the Columbus Crew this Thursday. Gates open at 7 p.m. Call for tickets today. Fire! Welcome back. A lot of uh, great statistics you'll see in the course of the show on the Dean's List uh, Honor Roll. Our thanks to the folks at the Dean's Milk Chuggers, another uh, proud sponsor, back again for another season of High School Extra. We're the couple of newest uh, inductees into the Chicagoland Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, Frank Lenti, head coach at Mount Carmel. Former Bear Emery Moorhead, also here as well, the pride of Evanston High School when he was starring on the gridiron there. Uh, let me talk to Frank just for a minute. Uh, your team, we, we touted you as the number one at the beginning of the season, right out of the gate. It's our fault. It's our fault, Socko, right? anyway. Put the jinx uh, on him, yeah. Well, not just, but not just your team. I mean, this first three weeks of the season, That's four true. weeks of the season, there's so many upsets. So many teams that were in the top 20 have just been bounced all around here. And, and Socko kind of alluded to this last week, too, that maybe uh, a little bit of parity teams are catching up to others in high school football. Are you finding that? Where it wasn't not as dominant as maybe as it used to be? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that's really a year-to-year -year thing. The thing that we like to talk to our kids about, and it's hard for youngsters to understand it, is that it can become soft with success. Uh, in the last four years, we've played in the state championship three times. Mm -hmm. And sometimes kids, their friends, their families tend to take that for granted. They start to think we're just going to show up and be good. Um, we could almost have predicted our demise in the first game of the season <laughs> uh, because some of those things were going on. Some of the things we had talked to the kids about the first week of camp in August, we were still making those corrections when we got ready for the Joliet Catholic game. Mm. Um, people asked me, they thought I was doing my best Lou Holtz impression. <laughs> I told them we're not. You know, the kids just were not focused in on the things that they had to do to be successful. And as we went along in time, we found it a little more difficult to get them to focus in until we got to the Marian Catholic game and our back was really up against the wall. And we told them it's time to step up you know, and show people that you know, you're worth a darn here. And it was interesting because I had some former players called. Uh, Bob might remember uh, from 1988 through 90, through 90, we had won three state titles in a row. We had lost one game in that three years. Mm -hmm. In 1991, we started the season 0-2. Yeah. Now we went on and won the next 12, but what really spurred those kids on was a former teammate had written them a letter from college telling them it's not your tradition to lose. <laughs> and a, a, and a couple point. of the kids you know, had understood that, and I got calls from some of the kids off of that team telling me, Coach, remind these guys. It took a long time to get there. It's not their tradition to lose. You know, you've got the, the youngsters from Naperville here tonight and Coach Bungie and his staff have done a great job, and I'm sure he talks to them all the time about building and maintaining their own tradition. So as far as parity, I don't really know. I haven't had a chance to look at the overall picture, and uh, a little bit of advice I'd give these kids, just like we talk to our guys all the time, nobody gives you credit for where you start. They only give you credit for where you finish. Yeah. 
That's a very good point. Do you have any of that with the Chicago Bears? Can you get the Super Bowl guys to come and call the current Bears and say, come on, guys, you have tradition, you're losing here. we gotta, we got to pump it up. Well, you know, the Bears have a long, rich tradition, as you all know, uh, going back to the 20s. And, you know, there is a lot of tradition. And that's the kind of thing that is lost, I think, uh, today in today's ball player. When I came to the Bears, George Hallis would give every new Bear a copy of Hallis by Hallis. And that told you about the history of the Bears, where they came from, and what's expected of the team and the great guys that played before. For you today, the game is different. Uh, the free agency guys play uh, for a team four or five years and contracts up. They're going to the next best deal. It doesn't build a tradition uh, like it used to. It's going to be very rare to see a guy play for a team ten or twelve years. I think in the future. How amazing is it too that the, so many of the guys from from that team that you were on are just still so identifiable today? To even uh, uh, kids that are here from Naperville that were probably mm -hmm. two and three years old, maybe when when you guys were winning this thing, they they know who you are. They know the names, they know the faces, and, uh, and unlike a lot of teams, yeah. guys that weren't from around here originally, they didn't scatter after this thing ended. They, they still well, that's because they got good own. parents out there in Naperville. <laughs> <laughs> kids, uh, you know, reminded, but uh, yeah, I think that you know. Our team was a, had a lot of characters on it. Uh, you know, you have Rich, Refrigerator Perry, Walter Payton, Jim McMahon, the entire defense. Uh, you know, nine of those guys went to Pro Bowls in their career out of 11 on defense. Uh, and it was a very special. I mean, that defense was, people were so afraid to play against that defense. It just had its own character within itself. And uh, there'll never be another team like that. I, I really honestly believe that, you know, to have that much talent, and it takes talent to win. Uh, you know, that's what it takes, and the, and the coaching just enough to let the guys do what they want to do and, and keep them in, uh, rein them in when you need to rein them in. And Coach Dicker had a great feel for that, and I think that helped us a lot. I know you still stay in touch, obviously, with the guys with the Bears and probably on the college level, but how much uh, do you stay in touch with guys maybe from the high school level, and how much do you, do you cherish the memories back then playing with Evanston on an undefeated team? Because I'm thinking, you know, these kids that are here right now with Naperville in the studio, they're ranked number one. It's all going to happen so fast for them in this, the, this season for them, and before you know it, it's going to be over in a memory. And I take it from a guy maybe that's kind of been through this and how you look back on well, it. Well, I think, you know, you enjoy it while you can, and everybody's going to scatter when you get to college, but when you come back, uh, you know, you're going to see these guys. They're all going to be successful. They're going to be doing their thing, and you're going to be hooking up and networking with these people. Same guys you played ball with, and I see the same thing now. Uh, in fact, my son's down in Illinois, and the right. director of, uh, of uh, fundraising for the Chicago area is a guy by the name of Steve Green that was the fullback on my team at Evanston, same class. So now we have tend to come back together, uh, you know, through my son. So, I, you know, you'll see everybody again. Well, we'll see the Naperville Central Redhawks kids here in just a few minutes. Okay. So let's take another quick break. We'll come back. Uh, one more segment with Emery and Frank. We'll do that, wrap it up with them, and then we'll bring the uh, Naperville kids up uh, after that. So stick around. More High School Extra in just a moment. on Good Eating. We'll sample a taste of Morocco with tagines, find out what they are and how some local restaurants make them. The chef of Grapes Restaurant in River North shows me how to make a vegetarian tagine, plus a unique dessert to order business in Mokina, and cheap eats on the city's southwest side. We'll visit Mila's for some Eastern European fare. See the Chicago Tribune's food section come alive every weekend. Watch Good Eating Saturday only on CLTV. The Internet. It's at the heart of business, creating new jobs, demanding new skills. But what's at the heart of the Internet? You'll find the answer at DeVry in our electronics degree programs. At DeVry, you'll learn about computers, networking, wireless communications. You'll learn the electronics technology behind the Internet, the technology that's changing the way the world works. For a higher degree of success, call 1-800-DeVry-11. Nothing spices up food quite like the irresistible flavor of fresh, ripe, green... 
pepper sauce from Tabasco. Tabasco brand green pepper sauce. The flavor of jalapeno, the spice of Tabasco. We gotta stop 36. This is our season here, boys. Right. Come on, guys, now we're I'm gonna eat you up, big man. I'm gonna eat you up. <laughs> Cyber bus. Yeah, and his ball hawking, tightrope walking, jaw dropping, jumbotron hogs. Yeah. Madden NFL 2000. EA Sports. It's in the game. Abe Jones of Rolling Meadows, not Abe Meadows. We got Rolling Meadows up there a couple times, but Abe Jones, a guy you had a chance to see, a fantastic yes, running good. back uh, at Rolling Meadows. Uh, found a couple moments I want to spend with Frank Lenti and Emory Moorhead. They're going into the Chicagoland Sports Hall of Fame, the induction ceremonies. Uh, tomorrow night, Maryville Academy is where it's going to take place. And, uh, a lot, lot of athletes obviously go in, such as Emory, but we're just kicking it around here during the break. Uh, Frank, one of the rare coaches that's going to be inducted here. We think that maybe Dorothy Gator is the only, only other, other high, school, high coach. school coach to go in here. So yeah. really quite an honor that they would select you uh, for what you've done in the high school football ranks. When, Tremendous. When I was called last spring, I was almost kind of taken aback. <laughs> I've attended this uh, affair a couple of times, and I was there last year when Coach Gators was honored, and I thought it was just a tremendous experience for her, for any high school coach. And, you know, someone told me that they thought I was only the second high school coach wow. to ever be inducted in the Chicagoland Sports Hall of Fame. And, again, I feel very fortunate to be involved with the people I'm involved with. Uh, you know, Father Carl, our principal now, all the way back to Father Bob Carroll, who had the uh, fortitude or the gumption or whatever to hire me because I didn't have head high school coaching experience at that time. And uh, I was just telling Emory, uh, when we sat down tonight, when we came back from the game Friday night, our head statistician told me that uh, in the time that we've had our staff together, that was the 200th game that we've coached uh, since I've become the head coach, and I think that was the 175th win wow. out of 200 games. So, again, we do have a good coaching staff, but it takes a lot more than just the staff. It takes great kids and a great Mount Carmel community. So I really feel like I'm representing the Mount Carmel community. Well, well said, yeah. There'll be a lot of people out there tomorrow night, too, won't there, from the yes, Mount Carmel community? Yes, they tell me that there are probably going to be about 50, 60, maybe 70 people from the Mount Carmel community there. Uh, I've gotten calls at school from parents of some of the players from our 1988 state championship team, parents that are interested in coming to this event to help support Maryville Academy and the program itself. Who's going to be there along with you, uh, Emery? Uh, actually, my high school coach is going to be there. Really? Man, was there. Good. Quite a few people have called me and said, you know, I've heard about it. I want to come, and I've given them the number. So I know that there are going to be a lot of people. That, you know, my family is going to be there. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people there. It's going to be a lot of people there, period. It's going to be a great, great event. Uh, they're expecting over 1,000 people there. Wow. And, of course, you know, Merrillville's on uh, River Road, just north of Golf Road and Des Plaines. Des Plaines. And it's just going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be action-packed, gang-packed. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. Real, real quick before we let you get out of here, uh, what do you think about this uh, new addition to the Bears with Dick Geron and that staff? And, uh, hey, they finally found the tight end. They're thrown to the tight yeah. end a little bit. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> That's going to excite you. Yeah, well, I, you know, I think this uh, this. Team, this it's very interesting. First of all, he's very unassuming. Uh, reminds me a lot of Tom Landry. Uh, doesn't have a lot of emotion on the team, but the people respond to his coaching. They're playing hard. And, you know, last week, you know, they made some mistakes in the fourth quarter. They didn't put them away when they should have. But uh, regardless, the product is exciting. It's on the field today. The fans were giving them a standing ovation in the third quarter, which I'm sure they hadn't seen in about three years out there. <laughs> so uh, I think it's exciting. I'm looking forward to, to better things to come. Well, guys, I appreciate both of you coming yes. out here tonight. And uh, really, this honor's well-deserved for both of you uh, tomorrow night. Have a great time. I know it's going to be a real fun time. That's at Maryville Academy tomorrow night, uh, part of the induction class going into the Chicagoland Sports Hall of Fame. Frank Lenti and Emory Moorhead. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll meet some of the Red Hawks from Naperville Central, the number one ranked team in high school football right after this.
Rage is brought to you by Dean Milk Chugs. my blind date. Please, just let him be different. Someone who's shy and sensitive. Someone who's into Mozart. Somebody who's not afraid to pick a flower. Who has inner beauty. We forget the looks. The luxurious poem from GS. It's hot. I gotta go. To your Chicago area Lexus dealer. As legend has it, the Chicago fire started when a cow kicked over a lantern. Flames engulfed the city, burning red as far as the eye could see. Nothing could stop the Chicago fire. Not the LA Galaxy. Not DC United. Not Columbus Crew. Not the Colorado Rapids. Don't miss the final game of the regular season. See the Chicago Fire battle the Columbus Crew this Thursday. Gates open at 7 p.m. Call for tickets today. Fire! One of those names that you saw on that list, Ryan Clifford. He's, he's on that list every week, and he's one of our <laughs> guests that's here this evening at the, the Naperville Central, guys. We'll meet them in just a sec. First, let's quickly go through the Powerade uh, Power 20. That's what we're calling this now. Oh, Powerade, a big good. sponsor. Pretty we're adding good. sponsors Excellent. left and right here on the show, Sock. Bring them on. Bring them on. Becoming very popular. So the Powerade <laughs> uh, Top 20 that you got here, let's uh, breeze through these real quick. And you got a new number one. As you see, Wheaton Warrenville South drops down to six. Right, I dropped them to six uh, right behind Mount Carmel. They finished, they started the season. Mount Carmel won, Wheaton South two. They both lost the game, so now I still have them side by side. Uh, Lincoln Way, their number two, and Thornton, number eight, are going to meet next week in a huge battle for the Sick of Blue. Probably the championship game comes down to that one. Joey Catholic and Providence keep on rolling. Uh, some of the top teams in the Catholic League. Donald's Grove North will face Donald's Grove South in a couple weeks. That'll be a big game. And Larkin and McHenry round up the top ten there. So we still got a real good sprinkling of teams. There. Taking a look at the second half of the top ten here. I guess the surprise team, really, Glenbard East, undefeated. Uh, and they're going to go up against Wheaton Warrenville South this week. We'll see if they're really for real. For real. But they did beat Naperville North, yeah. but you see them below there. So that established, in my mind, this team is for real. And they've been building for the last couple of years to this point. Bolingbrook uh, lost Steve Williams. They're 6'3", 275-pound linebacker for four weeks, so it's going to hurt them. Maine South continues to roll. I think they're the best team in the north suburbs. Lockport's starting to come back now. They play Lincoln Way this weekend, this Friday. Hinsdale Central, the best team in that West Suburban Conference, along with Downers Grove North. Um, Barrington making a comeback now with Dan Pullman after losing to Elk Grove in a big upset. And then Morris and Creed when he ran out the top 20. And let's take a look at also his uh, Powerade Public Top 5. We're doing this in the Public League. We'll take a look at his Top 5 uh, each week. And Simeon really uh, looking pretty strong. They really are. They beat East St. Louis this year. Yeah. Um, they beat some pretty good teams out of the Chicago area. Uh, they're the best team, I think, in the Public League. Dunbar is 1-3, but they've played some strong teams outside the city. And I think once they get into Public League competition, they're going to take over. Robeson's unbeaten right Right now, Roy Curry's got that program going again. Uh, Lane Tech, number four, my alma mater, and then Hubbard, number five. That's not just the only reason he puts them in the top five. they got a decent <laughs> team, too. Uh, let's talk number one, though, because the Naperville Central Red Hawks are the new number one team in Sacco's poll, and I think all around the state they're the new number one after knocking off Wheaton Warrenville South. And joining us right now, uh, linebackers coach John Guttrich. Yeah, Guttrich. John is here along with Ryan Clifford, number 22, a repeat performer. He's been out here before. You've yes. seen him here on High School Extra. Next to him is junior quarterback Owen Daniels, who's on the team. So we got the linebackers coach with a couple of offensive guys. Let's go offense first and get with the guy in the middle with Ryan because you continue to put huge numbers up on the board. You did it again. Four more touchdowns. What keeps going right for you here? Nobody heard about you in the beginning of the year. The next thing you know, you're leading everybody in scoring and rushing. Um, I don't know. I just got great teammates. They try really hard for me and I just run behind the offensive line, of course, and the defense just keeps on stopping the opponents and it's just a team effort. 
I'm just one player. So. I'll tell the truth, Ryan. Come on. Just because I left you off the list of top players in Watts this year, <laughs> this kid every week is rubbing it in my face. Soccer, here it is. You left me off the list? Here's some more yardage. Take that. I mean, I know we, we kidded about that. Yeah. But in some ways, did it spur you on a little bit? That it gave me a little incentive. I was... I was pretty upset about it, but, you know, I just... <laughs> <laughs> I heard you guys in the background. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it didn't really affect me that much. I just wanted to come out and prove that I could run with the best backs in the state, and I knew I had teammates that backed me up, so... Well, if it'll help you, uh, my next story, I write, Ryan Clifford really isn't that good. He's overrated, and then you can just keep on going better, right? No, uh, maybe you can do an expose <laughs> on some overrated writers around the town, too, if you want to, Ryan. Uh, uh, Owen, just a junior, quarterbacking this team, the number one team. Um, how much pressure do you put on yourself, especially going into a game against a Wheaton Warrenville South and the reputation that they had coming in? I try not to put any pressure on myself. I just try to just focus on what we've worked on during the week of practice and just try to have fun execute during the game. That's all I try to do. In some ways, Ryan's great start right now has to take pressure off of you because I would think defenses are first geared to stop Ryan and then the passing attack. Definitely. Uh, Ryan's a great back, and we've got a uh, great lineman to block for him, and we really haven't had to throw that much this year. We don't really need to because Ryan's <laughs> running wild on, on the field like every game. So We are still looking at some highlights, though, right. if you actually throw in the ball here. I think this probably may have gone down as actual, it, it kind of ended up being a rush for Ryan. But yeah. uh, what, what, what was it that you saw with Wheaton Warrenville South that you were able to exploit and able to have, make it work last Friday? We just watched a lot of films during the week, and... I just found some defenses that were uh, and some routes that we could run against them, and definitely that one, uh, just one right before it, a little swing pass, we found that it would definitely be wide open, so we use that. And, and I know you want to credit to the offensive linemen that are on that team because I, I, the, the guys afterward from Wheaton Warrenville South were just talking about it's the biggest guys they've ever run up against. And that's definitely. that's something to, to humble those guys like that the way you were able to do that. Oh, yeah. um, they just I, I keep on giving them all the credit in the world, but they deserve it. I mean. They're just great. They're great guys. We have a lot of fun in practice, and they're just fun to work with, and we're doing pretty well right now, so we just got to keep it up. Oh, and I got to give it the CLTV quarterback test. Name your offensive line, tackle, tackle. Sorry, left tackle is Donnie Baskin. <coughs> right, uh, left guard is Dave Hildebrandt. Center is Jeffrey Pearson. Uh, right guard is Ty Macko, and right tackle is Doug Rehor. <laughs> coach, you're the linebackers coach. How do you prepare for, for a Wheaton Warrenville South, knowing the kind of arsenal that they have and the attack that they uh, usually are able to put out there on a weekly basis? Well, I know uh, that Saturday and Sunday after the previous week, we uh, watched a lot of film and we were looking for tendencies and we broke down a lot of things. Um, we spent a lot of time on breaking down and checking out their tendencies, basically, and each team has a tendency. And we kind of found some that they had and uh, just prepared formations. We threw a lot of formations at our guys. And it was more of a uh, mental week than it was a physical week preparing for Wheaton South because they have so many formations. You know, along those lines, Coach, how did you main keep these kids from getting too hyped up, too excited, overly, you know, because a, a game like this, one against two, sometimes that can happen. And the next thing you know, there's mistakes on the field. Well, the kids were great because they understood that this is the one and two, but also it's only the what was it, the fourth game of the season. There's a long road ahead of them. Uh, I think if it was later in the season, it would have been, I think, higher, more of a higher emotion out of the kids. But also we told the kids going into that week that it was going to be a mental preparation defensively and as well as offensively. There was a lot of things that, that Owen had to, to get ready for and, and, and Ryan and the, the big boys up front. But making it a mental practice all week long kind of toned everything down and had them all prepared ready to go it's kind of like you know it, it kept them caged for a little bit <laughs> and, before you and let seeing them the same same thing over and over and then you just let them loose and <laughs> these these kids not really kids and these guys these men really handle themselves great well we'll let them out of their cages here in just a second because they are all out all right, we're gonna take a break we'll come back okay. you want to bring up the, the defensive guys is that what we're gonna yes. do next Libby we'll do that we'll bring up uh, some of the guys from the defensive side of things and meet them as well when we come back right after this
Sports Page is brought to you by the Stars of Chicagoland, your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Is it the Chrysler Sebring LXI Coupe or the Chrysler Sebring Limited Convertible? Multi-valve V6, speed-sensitive steering, room for you and three friends, and a luxurious leather-trimmed interior. Now the choice is yours. Get 1,500 cash allowance on the Sebring Coupe or get a low lease rate on the convertible. Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. we got to stop 36. This is our season here, boys. Right. Come on, guys. Now we're I'm going to eat you up, big man. I'm going to eat you up. <laughs> Cyberbutt. Yeah, and his ball hawking, tightrope walking, jaw dropping, jumbotron hogs. Yeah. Madden NFL 2000. EA Sports. It's in the game. If you were one of those little kids with a big imagination, cows aren't purple. Well, maybe space cows are purple. Well, imagine this. Robert Morris College can turn your creativity into a career in fields like graphic design, multimedia, and web design. Hey, you're going to spend about a third of your life at work. Why not spend it having fun? I think I'll do the trees orange. Green. Trees are green. Robert Morris College, where dreams find direction. Cardinals move back in front by three. And Kittner to throw. Looking long, and it's open. 23, Rocky Harvey, and you're not going to catch this guy. Rocky Harvey. Part of our Where Are They Now segment, Kurt Kittner from Schaumburg to Rocky Harvey from Dunbar High School, hooking up there at the Illini. And uh, Illinois got a lot of guys doing pretty well, including our buddy Antonio oh, Harris, goodness. who had 65 yards rushing. Uh, was, in that win over Louis. He was a regular when he was at bowling, but he called in yep. every week and uh, sometimes tried to disguise himself. Antoine Randall L, three touchdown runs and a touchdown pass in their loss against Kentucky, became the all time leading rusher for quarterbacks at Indiana there. Corey Paus at uh, UCLA by way of Lincoln Way. Uh, 9 out of 12, he got the starting nod. He was named the starter, then he got hurt in the game. Uh, had to leave. Drew Bennett came in, and Corey questionable now uh, for playing this week. Tommy Kutsos, his brother keeps calling me, and I keep checking this. <laughs> Fourth leading rusher in Division One AA. Tommy Kutsos is from Marmion Academy. Had another huge effort, 172 yards freshman, for Southern see. Illinois. Right, true freshman. Justin McCarrens out of Naperville North, putting up big numbers for NIU at wide receiver. And uh, Tim Lester is going to take on uh, Western Michigan. Is going to be at NIU this weekend. Going to be playing in DeKalb. So Tim Lester from Wheaton Warrenville South is tearing it up in uh, high school, uh, uh, the college ranks, as far as uh, passing is concerned. Let's take a look, too, before we meet some of the defensive guys for Naperville Central. Sacco selections. Here we Let's go. see how you're doing in this thing. Overall, 9-3. and three. You sure about that now? I missed one last week. There's been an awful lot of upsets. Which one did I miss last week, guys? Yeah, mm. which one did he miss? <laughs> <laughs> Naperville Central, folks. All right, let's take a look. And Sacco's going to go with an awful lot of road teams this week. So let's uh, see, starting with... Uh, Eisenhower at Richards. That will be the game I'll be at. And um, Richards is a little bit down this year. I know Eisenhower has a young man named Tory Stuckey, who's one of the best running backs in the state. And uh, he's been difficult to stop this year. So I'm leaning toward Eisenhower in this one. And let me mention, too, that you see all these games that are going to be mentioned up here. We're going to have cameras at them for highlights for Friday on Night Friday Night Fever. Fever, where you see a CLTV logo there. That's going to be our big game of the week. We're going to have two of them. Uh, this is one of them. With We're going to have live reports out at this one with Lincoln Way at Lockport. This would be a big one. Corey his younger brother, Casey Paws, is having yep. a great season for Lincoln Way. Also, they have a number of running backs, Justin Clark, and a couple other guys are having great seasons also. Craig I think Dupont Lincoln Way, Craig for DuPont Lockport. for Lockport is having a tremendous season. Should be a good battle, but I think Lincoln Way has a little bit too much uh, versatility and more weapons for Lockport. All right, Friday Night Fever is also going to be live out at Wabonzi Valley. We're going, we want to see how they handle uh, Larkin with uh, Matt Shabert and Trevon, uh, Hayes. Trevon Hayes and see about that offensive uh, output that they're able to Larkin do. Larkin might have the second best offense in the, in the area right now. Thornton is just scoring points, like I think almost 50 points a game right now. So that's the best offense in the Chicago area. But Larkin has a very explosive offense. I like them there. We'll also go around the corner to check out Glen Bard East game against Wheaton Warrenville South. I can't see Wheaton Warrenville South and Johnstone program losing two in a row. Glen Bard East does have a good team. They're best probably in their school history, but um, I don't think they'll be able to beat Wheaton Warrenville South this week. You know what? If Collins is still out for Wheaton, I'm taking Glen Bard in that He's one. He's going to be back I'm this gonna, week. I'll see if He'll they're for back. real. Morris at Oswego. 
This is always a big game down there, two of the best teams in the Suburban Prairie Red. Oswego was upset last week, though, so it takes a little bit off this game. Uh, Morris should still have too much for Oswego. And Lane Mather, a big uh, matchup public league. I think yes. that's one going to be on uh, Friday night, I believe. They're These are the two one. best teams in the Line I North in the public league. And Lane Tech right now is emerging as the best team on the north side of the city. So I'm going to go with my alma mater once again. Well, let's uh, meet some of the guys that play defense for Naperville Central that helped shut down Wheaton Warrenville South. Joe Alvarez, number 72, defensive tackle. The guy in the middle there is Scott Urban. He's an outside linebacker. And Gerald Clark, defensive back. The man on the end there, number seven. And Gerald, defensive back. DB's always got to be wary of Wheaton Warrenville South, that passing attack. How were you able to contain it? Yeah, we, uh, we had a big week in practice, you know, a lot of mental preparation. We sat down, watched a lot of film, and, you know, took note that they, they love to spread out the defense, you know, kind of throw the short pass and see if they can't get you to fall asleep. But we have real we're real disciplined back there, and we knew, you know, a couple times we're going to have to give up that short pass, but as long as we didn't fall asleep with the deep ball, we thought we were going to be able to contain them defensively. You know, Scott, uh, Coach Bungie is known for uh, always putting in a few wrinkles for a big game, and I think you were one of the biggest wrinkles he put in. Tell us about your adjustment in your position instead of being the rush linebacker, right. what you did to try and sure. stop Wheaton's passing attack. Yeah, since we knew they were going to have a large passing attack, we uh, usually I rush every game. I never drop back for the pass, but this week, or last week, I should say, for uh, Wheaton Morville South, mm -hmm. we had me drop back to, to have another person in the backfield you know, trying to you know, hold up their pass attack. How many guys did that give you then off the line to, to stop their passing attack, would you say? Um, I don't know. The, Seven, the eight guys maybe? Sure. That's, At least. That's quite a few. And then, Joe, you're the defensive lineman. With, with less guys to rush, how were you guys able to put on some pressure to, to give know. Matt Alley uh, I don't know about me, but I know the other guys did a good job of rushing. I don't think <laughs> I did a good job of <laughs> putting job. pressure on them. But, uh, yeah, we, I, I thought, you know, just... Our coach has been working really much with like a lot of techniques and stuff and double teams and you know how to get around that and all we could do is just keep trying our hardest and give it was mostly effort. It was most, I think it was mostly effort out there that helped us out the most. We were watching some of the highlights here too and I mean there's a Gerald coming up and making a oh, big play and, and a hit on, on one of the plays and I know you guys really wanted to get back at these guys after last year. They put an awful lot of points on the board against you guys and I know that probably hurt. You guys scored a lot too against them but they were real offensive slugfest. How, how badly did you want it to try to be able to contain them and keep them, you know, under a team that averages 40-something points? Yeah, we had a lot of guys coming back from last year that, you know, we weren't too satisfied with the way, uh, you know, we came out and played them last year. We, we understood they had some great athletes last year, but we felt that, um, you know, we, we didn't want to let that happen again this year, and our defense, I think, really stepped it up, and we let them know that, you know, we're a tough team to, you know, put the ball in the end zone on. You, you heard Coach Linty, too, Scott, talking about, uh, you know, what happens when you get number one, and sure. it, it, you got to take it a one week at a time here, not let yourself get too big ahead. Have you guys kind of kept it all in check yeah, here this know, week? We got, we got great kids on the team. Nobody is, I haven't seen a bit of cockiness out of anybody on the team, so I'm really uh, happy about that. You know, usually sometimes you get number one, and sometimes there is a little bit of cockiness, but, you know, we got everybody in check. Our coaches, they keep us straight, so I don't, I don't Right now, I don't think we have much to worry about in the cockiness. Speaking about that, I noticed, and I was at that game, the post-game handshake. Sometimes you get teams that are big rivals. It's kind of a, a, almost a fake handshake. You go through the motions. Sure. But both teams seem to respect each other. and all, It's almost like you guys don't want to gloat because there's a chance you could meet again right. in the playoffs, and there's no sense in giving them any ammunition to come back at you. Right. I mean, did you did you notice that with, with your team and with their team? Yeah, I noticed. I, I thought everybody was respectful. They were very respectful, and you know, we even kind of mentioned, you know, hope to play again. You said that. Hope to play again down in, down in the future. Well, about three of your last 15 games have come against that team, <laughs> so you're getting to know them awfully well. I tell you what, we got a whole bunch of Red Hawks out here. Let's take a break. We'll come back. We'll bring them all up here. We'll let these guys do the introductions. We'll meet them all. We'll come back right after this. Stick around. Arlington Heights Ford. Choose from 700 new Fords and certified used cars from Illinois' largest volume dealership. Escort, CX2, Contour, 
Taurus. Get 0.9 financing and a $750 to $1,250 rebate. Take Route 53 North past Woodfield Mall to Dundee Road. Turn right on Dundee Road to Arlington Heights Ford. Number one in volume, selection, and customer satisfaction for 10 straight years. As legend has it, Chicago fire started when a cow kicked over a lantern. Flames engulfed the city, burning red as far as the eye could see. Nothing could stop the Chicago fire. Not the LA Galaxy. Not DC United. Not Columbus Crew. Not the Colorado Rapids. Don't miss the final game of the regular season. See the Chicago Fire battle the Columbus Crew this Thursday. Gates open at 7 p.m. Call for tickets today. Fire! Dean's milk chug. Milk where you want it. Oh, Sports Page is brought to you by Powerade. Keep playing. Out here, we all want to play like the pros. Stop pucks like the superhuman Dominic Hasek. Fly like Theo Fleury. And roof it like Mike Madonna. What's weird is sometimes they wish they could play like us. Like when they're tied and the rules make them stop. We just keep playing. All right, we may have set a record. This I think we got record. a whole this Red Hawks record. team is about it. We'll let Gerald and Scott do the honors. Let's begin uh, back here over my left shoulder. There we got number three, Brad Spencer. We got Kevin Noel playing wide receiver. Our quarterback, Owen Daniels. <laughs> we got Ryan Amberson, who's an inside linebacker. Matt Paremba, also an inside linebacker. Drew Kosas, he plays an inside linebacker. Kevin Yazel on the D-line. Also on D-line, we got Luke Summers and Ken Kaki. Right here, we got Joey Havig. He's a DB. Right back there, that's Pat Spath. He's our other outside linebacker. Right here, we got Mitch Nowicki. He plays DB. Nick, Nicholas Arani, he's, also, he's an outside linebacker as well. We got Brian Euler and Brett Anderson, who are also DBs. Good job, All right, Scott. let's let Gerald take, no? us, through the, uh, take right. us through the front row I'm here. Slow it down a little for the guys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right here to my right, uh, number 20, Tim McMahon, wide receiver. Uh, to his left, Doug Rehor, number 53, he's our offensive tackle. Next to him, number 66, Ty Mako, he's an offensive guard. Next to him is number 60, Jeffrey Pearson, he's our center. Behind him, everybody knows, number 22, Ryan Clifford. Uh, next to him, big guy in front there, is number 79, Dave Hildebrand, offensive guard. Uh, next to him on his left is uh, Donnie Baskin, number 76. Big muscles during Baskin. Listen, did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> He's a big guy. He's a big guy. Showing him off. <laughs> to his left is uh, number 40, Pat Hinsberger, our tight end. And behind those two guys are our two fullbacks, Matt Yellen, number 44, and John Mahal, number 33. Okay, we put the wide shove up. We'll show them all here and all get right. uh, all of them in the, in the shot if we can. And show all. Look, look we're this. full house here of Red Hawks. And, uh, Gerald had a little advantage there because you can't see this, but they got the names on the back of the jersey, so <laughs> he wasn't going to forget any of these guys, not that he would anyway. But, uh, guys, great win over Wheaton, Warrenville South. Wish you the best of luck the rest of the season. I tell you what, you go on, you keep winning this whole thing. We'll get you all back out here again with the big trophy That's like right. we do uh, at the mm -hmm. end of the show. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, good luck to these guys this week. Wait, who are you playing this week? You got uh, Western Warren. Good luck against them. And uh, we're gonna, don't forget Friday Night Fever, new time. 10.30 Friday night, the replay, 10.30 Saturday morning. Uh, we will see you Friday night and back here again next Wednesday. Say good night, guys. In today's business world, information...